where are rates going? The internet is full of different opinions. We're gonna bring them all onto one screen here into one narrative and talk about that next. Hey there, my name is Ryan Skeggs and this is the Mortgage Minute. This channel is dedicated to everything mortgage, real estate, and interest rates. And we're gonna start with those interest rates. It is now June, 2023, five months in. We're at the high point of interest rates of what we've seen so far in 2023. Over the last month, we've seen that essentially been that narrative been pushed by this debt ceiling issues. That is hopefully being solved here uh, soon. It looks like we're going from the House to the Senate. If you're watching this later on, hopefully it's approved and all is well. But I'll tell you this, um, fr from what I'm seeing in my business over the last week, we've really seen a nice change of pace in interest rates. Instead of that steady rise, now we're starting to see those rates come back down. The average 30-year fixed, according to Freddie Mac, and I'll put that link below, 6.79, according to Freddie Mac. Again, our all-time high, 7.08. When I say all-time, I mean within the last you know 20 years or so. Um, so when we see 7.08 in October, November uh, this year, this is our absolute high, 6.79, so we're starting to approach that. But I'll tell you, just in the last few days, we are starting to see those rates move back down. Now, the topic of today is where are rates going? So I would love to hear from you. Where do you think interest rates end at the end of 2023 going to 24? Where do you think they're gonna, are they gonna start with a five, a six, a seven? Um, a couple weeks ago, I did a video that rates could go to eight if we don't get this debt ceiling. Uh, there was a really interesting article that made a hypothesis for what we could potentially see if they didn't come uh, to grasp with this uh, debt ceiling issue. So. Um, where do you think they're gonna go? I'd love to hear and see what your comment below. I'm coming back around at the end of the year and I'm gonna check this out and see who's right. I'll send you something cool, I promise. So, uh, but with that said, let me just start reading a few of the articles and information that I've pulled together uh, here for this topic today. Um, Fannie Mae, 30 year fixed rate mortgage will average six will average 6.4% for uh, this second quarter of 2023. Uh, so they already think we're going lower right now. National Association of Realtors, uh, they believe the 30-year fix will progressively falling into the 6.0% this year and 5.6 in 2024. So they've got us kind of that mid fives in 2024 and six flat. Um, we've got Bank of America, head of retail lending. Um, they're, they're projecting mortgage rates to fall to 5.25 by the end of the year. That would be so wonderful. So 5.25 by the end of the year. Um, Azilla Home Loan Senior uh, Macroeconomist, uh, a fight over the, the raising of the debt ceiling is likely to drag into summer and mortgage borrowers should expect rate volatility as a result. That is 100% true. We are seeing that. I'm seeing that every day of this volatility um, where we're having, well, previously we had a lot of bad days and one good day. Now we're starting to see a lot of good days where rates are coming back down and then just a few bad ones. Um, Mortgage Bankers Association, this is the one that, that I watch a lot too. Um, our forecast is for the 30-year mortgage rate to be closer to about 5.5 by the end of this year and drop a little lower next year, quote unquote. Um, that's from their chief economist, uh, Michael Frantoni. So um, where do we see rates going? Uh, we definitely have a hypothesis from a lot of smart people here that we're going to potentially see them a bit lower here over summer into fall. Now, one question that I get asked a lot, just got asked this actually twice this week already, is why don't I just wait until those rates move down? So I want you to think about this, and this is this is your opinion. And again, I'd love to hear your comments below. See if you agree with me on this. I contend if there's 10 houses out there and there's maybe 15 buyers, meaning there's more buyers than sellers currently, we we're low on inventory. Maybe there's closer to 20 buyers to 10 houses, but whatever. So let's call it 15 buyers, 10 houses. As rates move down, people that had lower rates that are currently not in the market, they're maybe sitting at 3% on their 30 year fix. They're a little bit of handcuffed right now in terms of not wanting to move or do anything are likely going to come into the market because they, they had that extra kid. They need an extra at-home workspace. Their job is now full remote maybe, or maybe hybrid remote. Um, you know, prior to the pandemic, if they were 
um, you know, had the same home before, or say you bought the home prior to the pandemic, then, you know, this home potentially lives a lot different than maybe just two or three years ago um, on this kind of new work-life balance that we have going. So with that said, that house isn't gonna change. So those people are at three and now they can lock in something in the fives, that could get them off the couch and out there at an open house buying a house. So now all of a sudden I would contend instead of 15 buyers, maybe we have 25 buyers but we probably haven't solved the inventory issues. We don't have a lot of new construction coming up. We have more rentals coming in. Like now at this point, we've got 10 houses and 20 or 25 buyers instead of 15. Well, guess what? It's gonna get even worse for buyers out there that are trying to purchase a home. They're gonna have to potentially go over. That's going to then solidify the housing prices, you know, because now you have multiple people maybe going over ask price to then continue to push the market up slightly. So do I see it going up massively? No, absolutely not. But I could absolutely see getting 100% of list price or being very, very close to that in my local Chicagoland metro market and staying close to 100% list price with multiple offers going in through summer and fall, that is absolutely a hypothesis I see. So would you rather own the house now and then maybe refi later into those lower rates or would you rather sit on the sideline and then wait for rates to come down and potentially be battling it out with more? So again, that is your opinion. If I'm right or wrong, would love to hear your comments below. That is the interest rate projection for 2023. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, Ryan Skaggs, Click that subscribe button if you made it this far. Click, click, click. It's absolutely free. Over 80% of you are not subscribed to the channel, putting out weekly videos on everything mortgage, real estate, and interest rates. Thank you so much. Stay safe, and we'll see each other again very, very soon.